fear, has been found to be one of the tools that the devil uses to get the advantage of God's people. Among the subsets of fear are anxiety, worry, anxiousness, freezing, and panicking. The spirit of fear we know is not of God. Hence the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Therefore whenever you discover fear or fearfulness in your life, you should know that is not of God, and being that it's not of God, it therefore goes to mean that the devil, the enemy is at work. And you have to resist him, for God commanded us in James chapter 4 verse 7. Saying, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So whenever we see or discover the action or the act of the devil, we have to resist him. And the very effective way of resisting the devil and pushing him back and out of our life is through prayers, the study of the word of God, and of course faith. Faith is the antidote for fear, but it takes the knowledge of the word of God to a faith, hence the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So word of God is a source of faith and faith is the antidote and cure for fear. Fear arises many times out of our worries and anxiety about uncertainties. And to overcome these destructive fears about future uncertainties, we have got to believe what God has promised us. For his plans for us are for our good. The Bible urges us, believers, not to live our lives based on what eyes can see but instead by what the Word of God says. In Hebrews 10 verse 38, the Bible says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Here believers were urged to live their lives by faith, that's by believing in what the Word of God says. It simply means that what God says should be relied upon rather than what the situation prognoses. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4 of Hebrews 11 says. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Verse 5. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Verse 7. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Verse 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Verse 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. We can go on and on till verse 41. But in a summary, what the Bible is simply saying is that our faith in what God says should supersede what our eyes, feelings, or intellect is telling us, or suggesting to us. Because the spiritual rules the physical. The physical things were given birth to by the unphysical. And the unphysical are our faiths, thoughts, and beliefs. The physical things are the products of the unphysical which are our faith and thoughts. So our faith and beliefs are the parents of our realities. In Mark chapter 16 verse 17, the Bible says, And these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. That means that whatever realities you see are the products of your beliefs or belief system. Therefore, it goes to mean that instead of being fearful, anxious, and full of worries over the future you may not have control over, you should instead create the future you desire through your faith and beliefs in what God says in His Word and through prayers. The Bible makes it clear that with prayers of faith you can create things. Hence the Bible charges believers in Philippians 4 verse 6, saying, Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, 
every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your, specific, requests known to God. That is exactly what God wants of the believers and not to be given into fears. The Bible urges believers to ward off fear with prayers and thanksgiving. God who has promised us all things is willing and able to bring to pass what He has promised if we can believe and exercise faith in His promises. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24, the Bible says, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3, the Bible says still, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you, and keep you from evil. So rather than fretting and worrying yourself about the unforeseeable future that God has promised to take care of, why not simply have faith in His promises as contained in His words, and you can always be rest assured that His plans for you are always for your good. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11 He says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So rely on God and cease fretting. Stop fearing. Only believe in God. His promises are trustworthy. In John 14 verse 1, the Lord Jesus Christ says, Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. Now let us pray. Everlasting and ever faithful Father we thank you. Thank you for your ever faithfulness in keeping to your words and promises. Forgive us for all the times we have doubted you and given in to fear, despite your instructions and commands that we should not fear. Therefore dear Lord like the prodigal son we have returned to you, ready and willing to commit our lives and futures to yours. For you know the future and you love us and you wish the best for us. Therefore dear Lord, instead of worrying and fretting we commit to your hands our health, finance, children, education, career, and everything that we are and that we have got. Dear Lord, take over and pilot our lives according to your will and plans in the name of Jesus. Now I pray for you. Everlasting Father King of Glory, I thank you for the lives of my listeners. Dear Lord, now that they have decided to hand over their lives unto you, dear Father Lord, may they never suffer shame. In the name of Jesus, protect and preserve them, deliver them from troubles and every form of embarrassment, financial, marital, academic, spiritual, and physical. In the name of Jesus, let their lives from henceforth be the reflection of your glory, your goodness, your might, and providences in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, help them turn away from their weaknesses and propensity to relapse and return to fear. For your word says in 1 John chapter 4 verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Therefore dear Lord, make my listeners perfect in love so that their fears be completely routed, in the name of Jesus. Let all their fears, worries, and anxieties be doused by faith in your word. Help them to overcome the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, endue them with the grace and power to pray, and engrave them with the spirit of strength and courage. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy and declare an end to fearfulness, timidity, and cowardice in the life of every listener. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree unto you, no more fear, no more panic, in the name of Jesus, no more hopelessness and dejection, in the name of Jesus, receive the grace to go each day, full of courage, faith, and confidence, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Father Lord, for answering, for in Jesus' precious name, I pray, Amen. Kindly give us a thumbs up to like this video. It will help the video to reach more people. Are you new here? Subscribe, and leave the notification button on so that you will be notified whenever we release a new video. God bless you.